Welcome and welcome back to Psych Ed. Today's video is going to be covering classical conditioning, which is generally attributed to a Russian scientist named Ivan Pavlov. Pavlov's experiments in classical conditioning are generally commonly known as Pavlov's dogs. So the concept of the classical conditioning is studied by every entry-level psychology student. So it might be surprising to know that the man who first noted this phenomena, Ivan Pavlov, was not a psychologist at all. Indeed, Pavlov's research originally focused on the ways in which eating excited salivary, gastric and pancreatic secretions. To do that, he developed a system of a sham feeding. Pavlov would remove a dog's esophagus and create an opening, a fistula in the animal's throat, so that no matter how much the dog ate, the food would fall out and never make it to the stomach. This might sound brutal, and it is by today's standards, but remember this was done almost 120 years ago. By creating an additional fistulas along the digestive system and collecting various secretion, Pavlov could measure their quantity and chemical properties. Indeed, this research won him the 1904 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. However, despite the intention of his research and the direction he was going in, the dog's drool turned out to be even more meaningful than he had first imagined. It pointed to a new way to study the mind, learning, and human behavior. Like many great scientific advances, Pavlovian conditioning, also known as classical conditioning, was discovered accidentally. In his research, Pavlov predicted that dogs would salivate in response to the food placed in front of them, but he noticed that the dogs would begin to salivate whenever they heard the footsteps of his assistant who was bringing them food. When Pavlov discovered that any object or event which the dogs learned to associate with food, such as the lab assistant, would trigger the same response, he realized that he had made an important scientific discovery. Accordingly, he devoted the rest of his career to studying this type of classical Pavlovian learning. Pavlov started from the idea that there are some things that a dog does not need to learn. For example, dogs don't learn to salivate whenever they see food. This reflex is hardwired into the dog. In behaviorist terms, food is an unconditioned stimulus and salivation is an unconditioned response, i.e. the stimulus response connection required no learning. In his experiment, Pavlov used the metronome as his neutral stimulus. By itself, the metronome did not elicit a response from the dogs, it was just merely a noise. As an aside, it's often written that Pavlov used a bull as his neutral stimulus, but the bull, the iconic bull would have proven totally useless to reach his goal, which required precise control over the quality and duration of the stimuli. So he most frequently employed a metronome, or a harmonium, or a buzzer, and even used electric shocks, but he did not use a bell. Going back to the original point of the, uh, the neutral stimuli, then Pavlov began the conditioning procedure, whereby the clicking metronome was introduced just before he gave the food to his dogs, and after a number of repeated trials of this procedure, he presented the metronome on its own, and as you might expect, the sound of the clicking metronome on its own now caused an increase in salivation. So here the dog had learned an association between the metronome and the food, and a new behavior had been learned. Because this response was learned, or conditioned, it is called a conditioned response, or a Pavlovian response. The neutral stimulus, the clicking of the metronome, had now become a conditioned stimulus. When the metronome was clicked, the dog began to have an increase in salivation. Now, based on this observation, Pavlov suggested that salivation was a learned response. The dogs were responding to the sight of the research assistant's white lab coats, which the animals had come to associate with the presentation of food. Unlike the salivary response to the presentation of food, which is an unconditioned reflex, the salivation to the expectation of food brought upon by the research assistant's white lab clothes, or the clicking of the metronome, is a conditioned reflex. Pavlov found that for associations to be made to stimuli, i.e. the clicking of the metronome, or the presence of the research assistant's white lab coat, and the placing of the food needed to be presented closely together, otherwise the association between the two could not be formed. He called this the law of temporal contiguity. If the time between the conditioned stimulus, the metronome, or the coat, and an unconditioned stimulus, the food, is too great, then learning will not occur. Pavlov's discovery of classical conditioning remains one of the most important in psychology's history. 
classical conditioning is classical and that is the first systematic study of the basic laws of learning and conditioning. Now, behaviorists adopted Pavlov's findings as uh, definitive evidence that free will does not exist and that subjective experience is meaningless and all that matters is an individual's behavior which can be quantified. Despite the attribution of Pavlovian learning to a, a behaviorist agenda, Pavlov never subscribed to that theory nor shared their disregard for the subjective experience. He considered human psychology to be one of the last secrets of life and hoped that rigorous scientific inquiry could illuminate the mechanism and vital meaning of that which is most occupied man, our consciousness and its torments. The inquiry had to start somewhere, but Pavlov believed it started with data, and he found that data in the saliva of dogs. And that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting, and if you do, consider liking and maybe even subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching.